Hello and welcome to a highly unusual How I Paint Things. Yes, that's right, for once it's not very special, although it is, I'm sure you'll agree, it is instead unusual, because what I'm going to do today is paint in real time. The only things that I'm going to edit out of this video are going to be drying times. So what you see is genuine. Everything I'm painting is going to be done on screen, and that's it. So this fella, um, like I, I'm going to say you later, I don't know exactly how long it took me to paint him. I'm estimating about 15 minutes. That'll pop up on screen now with the correct number. How interesting it will be once I find out. <laughs> he is uh, done in the style of my Death Guard, so that he matches with most of what I've painted so far, but I wondered if I could do it even faster. From 30 minutes of Marine down to however long this guy took, using mostly Army Painter Speed Paints, yeah, is it possible? So I'm going to show you this in real time, so that you can see every brush stroke, everything that I'm doing, because some folks will tell me on occasion, hey, you didn't do it like that. Well, yeah, I did, and I'm going to prove it today. So all of the paints, and there's not many of them, will be listed in the description below for this one. Let's get started. So what I've got in front of me is one of the swanky new Mark III uh, Horus Heresy Edition armors. Uh, this one is a little bit more, he's longer proportioned. Um, looks a bit more like the Primaris Marines, though not quite as tall. And I quite like what they've done with the set to give it a little bit more variety in the posing. Uh, the bodies themselves are largely single piece, but the arms will fit to uh, any of the bodies, allowing you to get a pretty decent chunk of variation in poses, and you can convert them as well. They're plastic, very easy to chop them to bits and do what you need. Now to start this fella off, I've primed him how I normally do uh, for these very quickly painted marines. So I started by spraying him with black, you'll see that underneath. Just sprayed the whole thing, and then from above, at a roughly 45 degree angle, I got some Brain Matter Beige spray, and I've used that to give the, the majority of the armor its color. You'll see obviously in some areas, I haven't hit it, and I'm happy with that. That's what I want, a little bit of texture and some deep dark recesses. That's going to look quite cool once this is all finished. It's also a little bit of a regularity on the armor, which I think really works for large armies. So I promised I was going to do this in real time. Now because I want to start from the lowest possible layers, I'm actually going to start by doing the leather equipment, and for that I'm using Satchel Brown. You'll see behind me this little plastic doofer. This is the Wargamers Edition uh, wet palette from the Army Painter. They very kindly sent me one of these to have a play with, and uh, I've been loving it. The little plastic doobler, which sits on top of the wet palette section, is actually super handy for those little plastic wells that you can uh, set the speed paint into. Now I'm starting from here because um, if I make any mistakes, I go too far onto the white armor, I've still got an opportunity to tidy it up. Uh, but as much as possible, I want to avoid that all the same. More haste, less speed, is what my uh, grandfather always says. I think that's all of the leather on him. Yeah, that'll do. Now that won't take very long to dry, uh, particularly if you're doing four or five of these guys at a time. What I've got next is Broadsword Silver, and this is an oddity amongst these sort of one coat paints. The uh, metallics from the Army Painter are pretty groovy. What I'm going to do is blast this over all the bits. Funnily enough, I want to be metallic. I'm going to slow down a little bit as I come near parts I want to be black later, because if I can, um, I want to stick to grim black later for that. Uh, now, it's tempting to go pretty detailed with this stuff, uh, but what I'm going to try and do instead is just concentrate on parts that are going to add to the miniature. And now, his backpack's a really good example of that when we get to that, because there's a lot of detail, uh, which in actual fact, we can ignore to some degree, you know, it doesn't have to be a Golden Demon winner, we are speed painting this. So, now this is ordinarily where I'd cut away. Uh, so if I sound slightly confused, or like I don't know what to say to you, it's because normally you're not sticking around for this part. Right, there's his gun done, uh, what else is silver? Oh, let's not forget the pistol. Uh, now the cool thing I've discovered about these metallic colors is that they don't, you know, they don't cover perfectly over a colored base, like the brown for example. 
but if you're painting quickly, you don't have to completely repaint the area with your primer to get a decent result. Uh, now, particularly with Death Guard, I have seen people do the big vents on the sides of the, the uh, power plants in silver, but I quite like leaving them white. Matter of personal choice, but leaving them white also makes them quicker to paint. Cha-ching. Now, fun fact, while I'm doing this, I actually used to host a radio show, internet radio, and uh, one of the things that you get taught very early on is that dead air is the enemy. You, know, you don't want silence in a radio show. And the same I tend to find is probably true of something like this. If you are tuning in to watch me paint something, sure, but watching me paint in silence is a little bit dull. So instead, you get the volume edition. Now, I think that is all of the silver. Like I said, these bits, for example, they would be a good candidate if you wanted to add a little bit more detail to the miniature, uh, but I don't. I've chosen Death Guard specifically to have as little to paint as possible. It helps if I do remember to paint the bits that I need to, though. There we go. And this little bit on the bolter. You'll see this... Um, Broadsword Silver actually covers really well. I was quite shocked by the uh, effectiveness of these speed paint metallics. There we go, that'll do. Now, moving right along, we're going to go to Algae Green for the green parts. Uh, something I really like about the new Mark III armor is you've got a slightly recessed edge uh, on the armor plates here on the shoulder pads. Uh, so it's actually way easier to line up your speed paint and get it on. Now I am going to apply this. Now oh, that's actually coming out much better than I thought. I thought that was going to be a little bit soupier towards the center. Uh, but by keeping my brush moving towards the corners, yeah, that's not too bad. Um, obviously, if you've got the molded shoulder pads, uh, that's going to look a little bit more interesting. But for our example here, this will be just fine. So nice sweeping motions wherever possible. Take your time when you get to those corners and draw your brush away from where you want the speed paint to collect. Uh, this one I'm having a little bit of trouble with. Uh, something I do like about the speed paints is that they do collect and settle just a little bit differently to how uh, contrast tends to. It's a minor thing, uh, but something worth noticing. All right, and we'll do, um, let's do the, the center of his pack too. And again, I'm choosing Death Guard mostly because they don't have a lot of ostentation. They don't wear a lot of different color, uh, but I do like having a little bit of extra just to give them some interest on the table. So quickly here, And again, the great terror of dead air. <laughs> yeah, when I thought about doing this in real time, I didn't really give much thought to what happens when I'm concentrating. So this is an experiment for all of us, really. Um, if you want to see more like this, obviously it's going to be more speed painted stuff or very quickly painted stuff. But I did have somebody tell me once upon a time, oh, you can't possibly paint that so quickly and I started thinking well I can, I can show you all right there's that green um, you might put one on the shoulder uh, the knee pad rather if you fancied but that'll do for me now, as that green actually dries and settles I, I really like how that looks uh, that's turned out much better than I thought it would for one coat of uh, speed paint over a big smooth armor plate hmm, cool I'm going to use now poppy red uh, now this is a super bright red and I'm just going to very carefully dot in the eyes. And I promised I'd do this on camera, so I'm going to do what I normally don't and make a huge mess. Or I might win. Hooray. Now I'm going to do that to the other one. So kind of, here I am narrating the eventual failure of a brush tip. Here we go. Here we go. Rock and roll. Yeah, dude. Okay. Two red eyes. <laughs>
Now let's go ahead and paint the trim and a few gold details. Now what I've got here, this is hoplite gold. Um, I'm using this because I've got the 2.0 speed paint set. I might try using, what is it called? Golden armor on a different different day, but uh, ooh, that's, looking, that's looking pretty good. After a shade, that's gonna be about the right color. Okay, um, I like a brassy kind of finish to my uh, Death Guard, but I would suggest that going down to Talos Bronze is gonna be way too dark. So Hoplite Gold it is. Now, the idea here as well is that I wanted to do this painting guide with as few paints as possible, um, or using just the materials that would be available in the uh, speed paint set. Now, because I am gonna shade this later with quite a variety of washes, <laughs> That's not going to be entirely possible, uh, but that's not too bad. A little bit of splash over onto the green, but once it's shaded, it should disappear. So let's do the other shoulder pad. Careful, careful. And it's actually kind of fun doing this essentially live. Um, if I had the means to actually stream this, it might be an entertaining option sometime and the trouble really is in making sure that everything's always on camera because where the actual aperture of the camera is and where i can see where i'm painting uh, don't line up all that well so i say all the time oh this is easy without a camera in the way uh, and i mean it you know you should find this a great deal easier than i do ordinarily so when i talk about doing this in real time you should be able to do this quicker than I could. Now, that's the shoulder pads mostly. Have I got all of that? Oop, a little bit more up on the top there. So that's the thing. I don't want to have to come back and tidy this up if I can avoid it. I don't want to miss any bits. There we go. In that little section there. Um, bits all the way back, I do not care if I'm not painting them. But these little doublers on top here, and I'm going to try and get some of the paint off of my brush and see whether or not I can speed paint glide. Speed paint glide. Oh, that's nervous. That makes me so nervous. This would probably be easier with a slightly smaller brush. But like I said, stick into the tools that come in the, in the box. Oh, goodness. Okay, now Death Guard. Let's, let's go ahead and give them a little brow plate as well. Um, most of the time I would ignore this because I like that plain finish. But let's go ahead and do it now. Uh, my hand's actually starting to shake while I'm trying to do this, so... realized I'd stopped talking because I was just about to cut away. Old habits, man. Old habits. Uh, and you'll probably see as well that I have cut the spike off because I do not like the spikes. Um, oh, one last little gold detail. Let's jam this on quickly before I forget it. All right. And now, unless I've got my steps mixed up, which I don't think I do, the very last color we're going to apply is Grim Black. Uh, now this is one where if you prefer a darker, more solid color, what you might turn to instead would be, uh, what is it called? Black Legion from Citadel. Uh, but I quite like, I mean, this is like Black Templar, but without the bluish tint to it. Uh, so it's a color I actually quite like. Now you'll see, when it comes to applying these, I'm sort of all over the show. Because starting nearest an area of detail like fingers or the edge of the bolters that I don't want to be black and then moving my brush away from them is generally the easiest way of making sure that things are nice and nice and tidy. So again, like I said, struggling to keep things in the shot here. Uh, but hopefully you can see what I mean. Like a lot of folks... They say that they struggle sometimes to reach certain areas on a miniature. Like, how do I paint 
XYZ, whatever it happens to be, and you watch them paint, and uh, you're holding the miniature just upright, like that, constantly. And it's almost like some folks, and I've done it myself as well, come to think of it, you forget that you're holding a three-dimensional object. So you can move it around, and quite often that will make life much, much easier. Now let's just make sure that I've tucked in, here we go, these last little bits at the back here. And I think, I look at that from the front, oh, no, don't want, don't want anything left with primer showing where I want black. Um, yeah, there we go. That is the bolter done. Let's just double check. I don't think there's anything on his back that I want to do with this, so we'll call that done for now. I've given this plenty of time to dry, about 15 minutes. And what I've got here is a mix. Um, I was going to use the marine juice, but a few of you have mentioned that um, you're finding it difficult to either mix up um, or to get the mid-brown, which apparently Army Paint is going to discontinue when the new range of Fanatics comes out, which is kind of a shame, but I'm sure they'll have something similar. All the same, what I've got here, this is instead just one part of Strong Tone and two parts Speed Paint Medium. So in this instance, it's four drops of Strong Tone, eight drops of Speed Paint Medium. I want it nice and smooth. And let's just chuck this over the entire miniature. Now I can be pretty generous with this at first, just splat it on and then drag it around until it gets where it needs to go. Might be a bit much on my brush there, or might not be. And so you'll see as it goes on, let's put on his arm here. It looks pretty grimy at first, but after a couple of seconds as it settles, uh, I love dark, it's not dark tone, strong tone, sorry, but how it just smooths out a bit. And uh, in this case, that's why I'm using the speed paint medium rather than the quick shade medium, because I want it to flow just a little more fluidly. Um, I'm running out of mix, actually. I might be applying way too much. Uh, but I need to make sure that I am getting it into all of the recesses. Now, big gloopy sections like this, I'm just going to drag it away with my brush and reapply it somewhere else. Because I want the shading, but I don't want it to make everything dirty and grimy. So even up on his pack here, you see it's easy enough to just apply it, and then start tickling it around with your brush. I think I'm almost out of the shade mix, so uh, I might need to be a little more careful in how I apply that in the future if I decide to keep using this method. Uh, but for now, I think... There we go, that is everything. Oh, no, that is not everything. That is not his bolter. There we go. Uh, is there anything I'm missing? I think I've got, oh, got everything there. Now, once that's dried, oh no, we have critical mission failure. Um, what I didn't realize at the time is that the bristles on the brush I was using, let's get a look at these, were far too rough. And uh, what I've done, as you'll see, maybe on the bolter here, or certainly along his brow, um, I have actually scrubbed off the metallic um, speed paint along those edges. Now that's not a reactivation issue because that would have manifested as them flooding and flowing in a weird way. Uh, you can see at the very edges, I've just scrubbed it off and that's a mistake on my part. I should have used a softer brush. Whoops, <laughs> is all I can say to that. So what I'm going to do, uh, stop the clock. You know, this is something that you would probably not encounter yourself if you were doing this properly. Uh, I am going to very quickly blast another coat of the metallics over the areas that I've lifted them and then try with that uh, dark tone mix, sorry, strong tone mix again, just so that everything matches. Um, a little bit disappointed by that, but oh well, that's why we're experimenting, right? Now, I was thinking of hitting him with a quick dry brush of silver over the gun and the metallic stuff, but I don't think he's going to need it. Um, the cleanup was actually quite simple. I really just blasted over with the metallic again, and it took it quite well. Uh, yeah, happy enough with that. It's not fantastic, but if we put him down with a dozen of his mates, he'll look fine, particularly if you've got shoulder pads that are going to show off the iconography a little, um, or some decals or something. Something that'll add a little bit more to this paint job. 
So what I am going to do though is take them outside. I'm going to hit them with a matte varnish and then I'm going to base them in the same way as I have for my Death Guard previously, which is going to mean a little bit of dust and grime up his legs and my radiator gurgling along beside me. <laughs> I'm not going to bother with the, the battle damage. I think the appearance that the contract, sorry, the speed paint rather gives is mottled and kind of grimy enough. So just a bit of dust on the legs. Let's come back and get a look at what it looks like once he's all finished. And so there at last, our speed, speed, speed painted Death Guard is complete. And I've got to admit, the base, quick as it was, um, like I said, I've done him in the same way as I have my previous Death Guard, it really adds a lot to the miniature. Um, I was a little bit worried he was going to look quite simple, and certainly as you can see him coming around, there are some parts which are simple. But that's a deliberate choice, and like I mentioned earlier, once he's got mates around him, you're hardly going to notice that. He's going to look like part of a unified whole. I'm actually, <laughs> I can't get over it. That came out way better than I thought it would. So I don't actually know yet, as I'm recording this, how long that truly took. I'm estimating maybe about 15 minutes. Um, when I did the other style of uh, Death Guard Marines that I have done for the speed painting method, that took me about 30 minutes give or take a minute or so either side per marine. So if this is 15 minutes, I've halved the time, and I don't think halved the finish. That's that's pretty cool. Man, I need to build the rest of these, uh, these Mark III marines now, don't I? As always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, who make this channel possible, including my gorgeous producers, their names showing up on screen now. You are the folks that keep me going. I really appreciate the support. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all. It's been a slightly longer one than usual. <laughs> you all enjoy the rest of your day.